Hey Archeeks, welcome to another video. So today we will be discussing about how to calculate the PI. Now, in the previous video, we discussed about Ramachandran plot, which is a very important concept for gates. Similarly, there are many questions asked where you have to calculate the value of the P. You have to calculate the PI for an amino acid and input the value. So without much ado, let's get right into the video. So firstly, what is PI? PI is also called as the isoelectric point. It is the point or the pH at which the amino acid has a net charge of zero or its overall charge is zero. So it is that pH where the amino acid has an overall charge of zero. So a amino acid, as you know, has an NH2 group and a COOH group, an R group and an H group. This NH2 group, because of its lone pair, tends to get protonated, that is, accept a proton and form this NH3+. Plus. The COOH group tends to be deprotonated, that is, lose its OH minus, its H plus, sorry, to form COO minus, right? Now, when the amino acid is in this particular form where it has a plus and a minus, the overall charge will be zero and that pH where this happens is the PI. Now, there is a twist for those amino acids that have an R group which is ionizable. So, for them, there is a slight modification in how to calculate the PI. So, we are going to look at that right now. So, as I said, there are two types of amino acids. One, which would have an R group that is non-ionizable. That is, it is not going to be deprotonated or protonated. For example, glycine, which has an R group of H. Then you have amino acids that have an R group of CH3. These groups are non-ionizable and therefore they do not get protonated or deprotonated. For such amino acids, you simply calculate the PI by calculating PK1, PK2 by 2. So you take the average of the PK1 and the PK2, right? As simple as that. Don't have to do anything. Just add both PK1 and PK2. Now you will say what is the PK1 and what is PK2? So the PK1 is that point where the COOH loses its H plus to form COO minus. That is, this group gets deprotonated. And PKA2 is where basically the NH2 group, okay, that gets protonated. So that way it gets from NH3 plus, it gets deprotonated to NH2, or you can consider vice versa. Right? So you just have to do PK1 plus PK2 divided by 2. So they'll give you two values, just add it, divide by 2, that's the PI. Usually this is too simple to do and hence it's not asked. What is asked for those amino acids that have an ionizable R group? Okay, the group where the R group can be ionized, that is it can be deprotonated or protonated. In that case, what to do? So we have three values, PK1, PK2, and PK3, sometimes represented as the PKA1, PKA2, and PKR, right? Now, for those that have an ionizable group, this particular value will be given. So, in that case, what you will do? So, for the acidic amino acids, you will take an average of the acidic groups, okay? You will take an average of the acidic groups. Whereas for basic amino acids, you will take average of the basic groups. So the one that will have the PKR and the other one accordingly, you can see from the value. And so let's try and understand this with a formula, with a question. So here you have histidine amino acid. Its three PK values are given. They have given you PK1, PK2 and PKR. They have asked you to calculate isoelectric point. So this much is definitely clear that histidine is an amino acid that has an ionizable R group and therefore you have this. So definitely to take the PI, you have to take average of the PKAR 
along with that now should you take pk1 or you should take pk2 now because histidine is a basic amino acid basic amino acid you will take the larger value so the larger value is the pk2 so that way if you take an average of the two you will get this answer okay now how to understand whether you should take the larger or the smaller so this is very similar to the concept of ph when we say that there is a lot of h plus ions that means the ph will be very low right a ph of 1 means the the acid is very acidic it is dissociating a lot to give h plus similar is the concept of pka and the concept of ka pka and ka what is ka ka is dissociation constant so more the dissociation less will be the pka so a lesser pka means that it is dissociating a lot means this will be the acidic group na if it is a basic group then what that means it will dissociate very less therefore its pk will be high so now in this case there is pk1 that is 1.8 and pk2 9.2 so definitely 1.8 is corresponding to the dissociation that is it's getting more and more dissociated so that's the acidic group so which one you will take k2 because you have we are talking about the basic amino acid histidine so that way you can easily calculate so after this what you need to do is 9.2 plus 6 divided by 2 so if you uh, calculate what you get is 15.2 divided by 2 that is nothing but 7.6 so your answer to this question is 7.6 similarly you can see another example here of lysine again they have given you the three pk values and they have asked you to calculate pi again because you have given they have given you three values means lysine is definitely having a ionizable r group lysine as we all know is a positively charged amino acid which even if you didn't know you could figure out from the r group they are showing it's a nh3 plus means it is a positively charged group. so definitely this is the pkr so you will take this value now the question is whether we have to take this value or this value so obviously you are going to take this one so then that comes out to be 9 plus 10 by 2 that is 19 by 2 and that is 9.5 so this is the simple answer positively charged so you will take these two groups okay finally this question very simple they have given you the carboxy group and the n terminus of the amino acids and they have said the values are as follows so pka is for the c terminus group c terminus that is a carboxy group is 2.2 this is cooh and for the amino group for the amino that is the n terminus the value is given as 9.2 right this is the nh2 group now the pk of side chain of the carboxy group of glutamic acid so this is the pk of glutamic acid which is the cooh group given as 4.2 whereas the side chain i should represent it as pkr then the side chain for pkr for lysine is given that is 10.2 calculate the difference in the isoelectric point of lysine and glutamic acid So you have to do pi of lysine minus the pi of glutamic acid. So individually first find out. So pi of lysine we just saw. How will you calculate the pi for lysine? Will be the R group that is ten point two plus. What will be the next one? It will be the other positive charge group that is the n terminus group that is nine point two. Add both of them. what value you will get calculate it see the answer then for the glutamic acid we have again pi of glutamic acid the ionizable group is 
this so the r group value is 4.2 which value you will take this one 2.2 because it's a acidic amino acid it's going to lose this value smaller value more dissociation so you will take this calculate so this will become 6.4 by 2 right so that is 3.2 did you all calculate for this one what will this be 4 and this will be 19.4 divided by 2 which comes out to be 9.7 subtracting the 2 9.7 minus 3.2 that comes out to be how much 6.5 so what is the answer 6.5 hopefully this video was helpful and you got to understand some new concepts that's it for me for today i'll see you in the next video bye